Hey guys, one up Indie here, coming with a brief, nice nostalgia trip in the VFX tutorial, and we are gonna go deep, deep, deep into the good old past, more or less good old, because uh, some people would say the graphical stack which you're seeing in front of you is ugly, but of course this is in the eye of the beholder. I prefer a little bit more colors than one, <laughs> basically just black and white. This is of course very hard for the eyes. And therefore, I'm going to explain, hey, what is a bitmap, a uh, pixmap, or you can call it raster, th three words for the same thing. And uh, for example, you have basically encountered that a bazillion of times and why it matters for video games. And if you are a developer, it matters even more for you. Alrighty, so let's go into the good stuff because um, there are just a few things which you need to understand. So what is a bitmap, pixmap? Well, it's basically, and we are just zooming in here, a digital image. So I guess this should be very obvious to you guys. But of course, this one has a raster. The raster, as you can see, has different kind of cells. And those cells are just pixels. So this is how you call that technically. And of course, the uh, pixels are a relative thing. So on the display, uh, one pixel looks a little bit different than on another display. So here there are some variations concerning how what kind of density of pixels you're having. But we're not going to talk about this. So we're going from here a little bit more absolute. So let's say we are having those cells here, which are the smallest unit. And, and here comes the end. We want to give them some information because we want to give them color information. So if you go to the good old, hopefully never to return areas of the one bit area where we have two colors. Yes, you are writing seeing this correctly two colors so they, this was in uh, white and black or this greenish blackish thing wow those days are good and gone so we don't have to return here so how did this work well you had your image of course this one is has a little bit more color so for example you just had one image which is looking like one like this boom let's make this a little bit transparent so you can see it and then the, all the cells had a color information which was one bit so zero and one come on zero and one as you can see uh, the ones are on the black areas and the rest was then let's say filled with white or green so this is the monochrome good old very very old monitors which was from the past and here this information is being stored as 0 and 1, which is then called a bit. And here we can make an interesting calculation. So let's say our whole thing is 32 pixels uh, has a width and 32 pixels of height. So 32 by 32 is this number here <laughs> and then times the bits. And then we can just assign, all right, this is how much computer storage uh, it is holding. So basically uh, 1000 and 24 bits or for example if you calculate it down by divided by 8 then we have 20, 28 bytes and even divided even further then you have 0. Point something kilobytes and of course megabytes and then gigabytes then you i guess you can follow me in this kind of regard so these things were taking very very little information so because because every cell was just having a zero one as an information then therefore it was uh, not cheap, but it was very resource uh, saving. But of course, if you go to other areas, so let's say, for example, the Nintendo, so the NES area, not the Super Nintendo and the, well, the other stuff, then we had 8 bits. So 8 bits is the well, an information which we can put in each cell, which is two times uh, two uh, of the power of eight. So this is 256 colors in total. Interesting part is, this it was specific for the NES area. We, they could have used well this amount of uh, colors because this is well this they could store so many informations in here, but this um, they kind of were even more <laughs> resource well staffed and therefore we, they just used 54 colors and therefore this is the whole color palette of the Nintendo area and therefore. And the sprites looked like this. Of course, this is a little bit of cheating because I have more than three colors. So this is one thing which uh, the, the old Nintendo era still had. They could use per sprite. So this is the little image here. 
um, just three colors and therefore they look the way it looked of course still much better than these guys here but well i'm having eight colors so one two three four five six seven eight yeah so eight colors i'm a little bit cheating here so this is looking like it but it's definitely not well a good old style of nintendo guess and of course then you go into the super nintendo area which is using 16-bit de color depth and therefore boom we're having a few more colors between let's say the 8-bit area yeah definitely more and of course the modern standard is 32 bits so there are a few million colors and um, the interesting part is that most of them are used for colors per se but a few uh, millions of the 30 30 bits are being used as transparency or alpha channels so here um, so you understand um, that not all the colors are in quotations colors so they are uh, well refurbished for something else alrighty so here for example if we would say like hey we don't want to have a one bit encryption but let's say uh, well this guy here then of course we can go with eight bits because still this works with eight bits and therefore the number would ramp up here quite a bit and of course then we are not using a really small well, uh, amount of the da data in our storage but definitely more because let's say eight times more it's it's ramping up and of course if you have a very very nice big picture then of course the size in megabytes of your for example let's say the average what would i say picture of your smartphone which you are doing so if you just snap one with your camera then i guess four five six megabytes and this is how this stuff is being calculated so the size is depending on the resolution so the whole how many pixels you are basically having times the depth of the quality of the color so basically how many colors you can what kind of color information you're storing and then boom you're getting an end result number so hopefully that was of interest to you next time we're going to go into some anti-aliasing or for example uh, what's the difference uh, of rasters to vectors or so rasters are once again your um well, your bitmaps or your pix maps and for example you're thinking so what does this, uh, did i see that in concrete well yes because your bitmaps your pix maps are pngs jpegs gifs even psds and then for example your vectors because they are better for scaling because scaling really sucks uh, with uh, <laughs> with bitmaps and then you have uh, P uh, pdfs svgs ais eps and so on of course here you have some alpha channels and jpeg doesn't have any i guess gif has some alpha channels but let's say uh, like we can actually go in here and do some stuff and as you can see boom nah here yeah. give grayscale they are different kind of quality settings and let's say 8 bits 16 bits as you can see they are different ones and then um, they will be having a different file size depending what kind of what well, kind of information they are holding hopefully that was of interest to you and i see you the next time in some more stuff around retro games and well color theory and all that shabam alrighty have a good one one up indie